Tanoka Takamiya is an average high schooler, going through his standard daily schedule of an exhausting school life, but somehow he always finds himself near to Ayaka Kagari, the most beautiful girl in his school, also known as a princess by other students. For his perceived closeness to the Kagari he often beaten up by bullies from her fan clubs. After completing his cleaning duty, when Takamiya goes to throw trash outside, he finds a bunny doll mixed in the trash with a note written on it, saying some building may fall, suddenly school building falls upon him, but he is saved by none other than Kagari, who is revealed as a witch, riding her broom floating in midair. <laughs> the one who attacked Takamiya, also sends some rabbit tin soldiers to attack them, but Kagari protects him. While Kagari deals with tin soldiers, someone lures him away from her. He gets captured by tin soldiers, and when they are about to execute him, Kagari shows up and burns them all. Takamiya thinks it's all his dream, but Kagari reveals that it's her mission to protect him and refers to him as her princess. Takamiya fell unconscious while protecting her from one of the tin soldiers attack. Then angry Kagari burns all the remaining soldiers with her fire. When he wakes up Kagari tells him now she is going to protect him publicly. It leads him to realize why he always ends up close to her. From that moment they start going home and coming to school together, which makes Takamiya a target for other students. After class, he goes to the school's destroyed site and finds it has been completely restored as if nothing happened. Just a bunny ear girl tells him that it was her illusion magic and tries to capture him but failed when Kagari shows up. Then she summons the large army of 10 bunny soldiers and orders them to capture both of them. However, Kagari saves him from the attacks and then burns the whole 10 soldiers army, making Bunny Ear Girl retreat immediately. The next day, Bunny Ear Girl Tampopo along with four other girls, Rin, Katetsu, Kana and Mei transfer to his school, and Kagari noted that they all are witches. The next day, Takamiya comes alone and decides to ask Kagari everything. Upon arriving at school, he opens a classroom door to find Kagari torturing four of the evil witches who transferred to their school, though she only captured four, and one is escaped. Takamiya asks the head of the witches, Tampopo Kureishi, why they are after him, then she claims that they are not after him. They just need to get his white stuff, which obviously gives him a wrong idea, and he lost in his own fantasy. <laughs> Suddenly, the fifth witch who escaped earlier shows up and kidnaps Takamiya and leaves Kagari to deal with other witches, yet doesn't get far before Kagari blows them generally away with her fire magic. Before the witch escaped she attacked Takamiya and noticed the injury she gave him is reflected on Kagari's neck instead. When Takamiya wakes up he notices a scarf around Kagari's neck hiding something, then he requests her to teach him magic, and makes him her apprentice. Later, Takamiya goes on a date around town with Kagari, on their way she explains there are two types of witches, one is a workshop witch, and also where she belongs, they protect the town from evil magic, and others are tower witches, they use their magic for evil purpose and if they get him, will end for the world. While they are shopping at the mall he encounters a girl who was helping the child. That girl is happened to be a tower witch who is also after him she attacks and tries to capture him along with other two tower witches, but Kagari saves him from their attack. She blasts them away from the mall with her fire magic. Then she brings him back to school to meet the chairwoman, her mother, and the leader of the workshop witches in the city, Kazane Kagari, who welcomes him to workshop. Before Kagari begins Takamiya's training, she had another quick encounter with Tampopo's KMM gang, and their duel over quickly after it starts. Afterward, as both of them ride the school bus, they end up in the trap of a strong tower witch, named Kronwer Schwartzforth. Kagari tries to protect him, but Kronwer attacks her, and when Takamiya tries to stop her, she represses Kagari by harming Takamiya and utilizing his dormant powers of moving all his harm to her. Then, she uncovers that because of the contract Kagari formed with him to use the hidden power within him, which gives her endless magic supply, makes her invisible witch. But the one condition is all the damage he receives, 
will transfer to her instead. In order to save Kagari, Kronwar forces him to swallow a candy to unleash the power within him. Kagari manages to wake up on the time and stops her. <laughs> then Kagari borrows some of Takamiya's power and defeats Kronwar, forcing her to retreat. Afterward, while Kagari recovers Takamiya keeps Kronwar's candy with him. Kagari finally begins Takamiya's magic training, but he finds his costume rather embarrassing than spatial. She starts by making him aware of the power of a witch's costume and his own latent witch power, explaining their robe gives them the ability to hide in plain sight and can't be seen by normal peoples, and teaching him how to fly on a broomstick. After flying around the town, Takamiya sees a girl being bullied, Kagari says witches only protect the town from evil magic and not interfere in normal human life, but stubbornly Takamiya decides to save her by himself until Takamiya himself must be protected by Kagari once more, revealing was a trap to lure him away. Meanwhile, other witches also transferred to his school. Somewhere else, a strong tower witch named Medusa is shown gradually cracking open her supposedly unbreakable prison. While the KMM gang makes another plan to kidnap Hanoka by splitting him from Kagari. At Takamiya's home, Takamiya's younger sister Kasumi suspects and asks him about his relationship with Kagari. She starts getting jealous of her brother spending more time away from home with Kagari, and she asks him to tell her everything about his previous meeting with Kagari by threatening him with a hair dryer. While on his way to school, Takamiya is again targeted by the KMM gang they attempt to kidnap him by splitting him from Kagari. Tanpopo captures Takamiya and other members of the group attack Kagari. Just then Kasumi intercedes for her brother's sake with her giant teddy bear. It reveals Kasumi is also a witch who belongs to the workshop. Tanpopo also summons a giant tin rabbit soldier to fight against Kasumi's huge teddy bear, and their fight begins. Another witch may comes to help Tan Popo and attacks Kasumi with her bone dinosaur. However, Kasumi's bear grows so enormous that its attacks destroy a significant portion of the town, while leaving the people unharmed, causing more problem for chairwoman Kazane who is enjoying her tea. <laughs> Afterward, Takamiya is a little surprised to find out that Kasumi is a workshop witch. And Kagari also returns having quickly beaten the other tower witches, promising to watch over Takamiya every minute of every day, and ask him to live together from now on. Kagari visits Takamiya's home to get permission from his mother, if he can stay over at her house from now on. Despite Kasumi's objection his mother agrees and reveals that Kagari is actually Takamiya's fiancé. She tells how she and Kagari's mother met in the past and become close to each other, but couldn't marry. So they had a promise, their future children would be married to each other instead. Kasumi refused to give up on her brother, so her mother hold her down until Kagari leaves with Takamiya. Upon arriving at Kagari house Takamiya is surprised by her huge luxurious mansion, and as they open the room they find themselves face to face with the escaped Medusa. Kagari decides to fight her alone and send Takamiya away. While Kagari battling against Medusa Takamiya, also decides to help her and dressed up in his witch costume, but Kagari gets cornered in the fight, and Medusa uses her magic to turn Kagari into a stone. Takamiya noticed the candy that Kronwar gave him previously, and with no other choices left to save Kagari, he decides to swallow it. It leads to drawing out the white princess, Evermillion, into the real world. Evermillion uses her power to beat back Medusa which winds up obliterating the majority of the mansion and an enormous piece of the school too, angering Kazane enough, who is relaxing after her work to call for an emergency tower witch hunt. <laughs> Evermillion then, at that point, uncovers that all Takamiya needed to do was kiss Kagari with adoration to awaken her, before she disappeared. Takamiya does the same as Evermillion told him, and Karagi opens her eyes. Medusa also returns with the KMM gang and attacks her again. But this time Kagari uses her powers to defeat Medusa and the KMM gang again. Afterward, when he wakes up he noticed all the workshop which is gathering along with his sister, and he takes Kagari to his home to stay together. 
Later, before Cronwer can launch her evil plan, Kazain captures and then tortures her for information. <laughs> Next morning, upon arriving at school science teacher named Mikage Sensei called them to the science lab, while telling Takamiya to stay away from Kagari. He separates him from her in another dimension, using Clark's third law as an excuse. By showing him a replica of Cronwer's candy, he warns Takamiya that by using the candy, one of five seals has been broken, and if he reveals the information to anyone, Kazane could make a radical move before Kagari takes Takamiya back. Afterward, Kagari gathers every student in the school's hall and uses her authority as princess to fire the current student council president and appoint Takamiya as the new student council president. After school, while on their way home, Kasumi attacks Kagari with the car and shoots her with the powerful tranquilizer gun and then kidnaps Takamiya to take him out of the town on her giant teddy bear plane, where Kazane's power evidently can't reach. However, Kagari quickly recovers and uses a dragon to destroy Kasumi and her giant teddy bear plane before they can get away and catches both of them before they hit the ground. Afterward, Takamiya apologizes to Kagari for Kasumi's actions, and Kagari insists to become his older sister. Kagari has been covertly keeping Medusa and the KMM gang in her room at Takamiya's home after their last fight. Tanpopo and other attempts to discreetly kidnap Takamiya and waited the whole night yet, just can't track down the right second because of Kagari who was protecting him. Takamiya's mom and other return home, and as he goes to the bath Mei and Katetsu accidentally run into him while coming out of the bath and immediately capture him, provoking a standoff with Kazain. As she gets back from a shopping trip, Kagari aligns herself with the Tower Witches to protect Hinoka and merges herself with Medusa to boast her power. <laughs> Takamiya learns from Kagari's memory after their last battle with Medusa in order to protect Takamiya Kagari made deal with Medusa to exchange her power with Medusa and also promised to give them a place for hide. <laughs> However with her combined boosted power Kagari managed to hold Kazane for a little moment, but still not enough to defeat her and lose, and when Takamiya tries to save her by using his power, he accidentally swapped their bodies and Kazane beats Takamiya unconscious instead of Kagari. <laughs> Kazane then throws both Takamiya and Kagari inside the torture chamber. Kagari decides to fight her mother, saying there is a way to defeat her. She asks him to let her give him ear cleaning and borrows some of his power to break out, damaging another section of the school to Kazane's despair. Kagari prepares to fight her mother, but Kazane refuses, demanding the two of them dress up and go home instead. <laughs> Takamiya has a dream of Kagari's past where she was a socially hindered little girl to the point that her mom asked two similarly young workshop witches to watch over her. They help her in her school and everyday life, and Kagari become quite famous for her school. Kagari often spends her after-school time searching for a specific boy at neighboring boys' schools, and after searching almost every boys' school, her searches continue the whole year until she, at last, managed to track down Takamiya. back into reality, before going to his school, he end up in an awkward situation with Kagari in front of Kasumi. Upon arriving at school, Takamiya is forced to deal with a challenge to his authority as president of the student council. Suddenly after the first class Takamiya discovers the whole school becomes a lawless zone with full of delinquents, and an infamous delinquent Rainan arrives and challenges him for one-on-one -on -one duel after school. She tells him to come alone and leaves. Vice President Tauko informs him that at her part-time job, she saw the ex-president with Rainan telling her that Takamiya physically abused her, and as revenge, Rainan set her entire hamster-themed gang to trash the school. Kagari tries to help him to fight her, but he refuses, so she gave him advice on how to defeat Rainan. In his fight with Rainan, as soon as he arrives Rainan start punching him without giving him any chance to explain himself, until he manages to pin her down on the floor by following Kagari's teaching, but is unable to finish her off. The KMM gang arrives for his help, but Rainan easily beats them. <laughs> then Kagari shows up and beats Rainan, making it appear as though Hinoka won. 
Later, it is uncovered that was Kagari's plan reaffirms Takamiya's position at school. After that incident Kagari finally decides to teach Takamiya offensive magic. She forces him to fight against her, summon familiar, and asked him to do the same. <laughs> trying to make him summon a familiar by throwing him off the roof of a tall building. However, in a panic situation, he ends up summoning a giant statue of Kajeri in a sexy nurse outfit that catches the two of them before punching a nearby building. <laughs> Meanwhile, Kazane with Rhinon discovers a giant magic bomb under the city and meets with a tower witch named Weekend to negotiate. <laughs> Weekend refuses to negotiate and simply detonates the bomb, destroying several buildings and exhausting all of Kazane's magic power as she tries to limit the damage and then capture her. Kagari takes Takamiya to their underground base for his safety, where he meets other workshop witch Nastium and Atori, along with Rainan and his sister Kasumi. Natsu manages to get Kagari and put her to sleep by shooting Takamiya with sleeping bullets, because of their contract, all damage is transferred to Kagari. Rainan then escort them to an isolated chamber for their safety. However, a high-tech magic puppet created by Weekend finds them and starts projecting video message from Weekend. Kagari destroys the puppet and uses its power to blow up a section of the wall and escape through it. But Kagari remarks that neither of them have their magic power. Kagari and Takamiya come out to find themselves in a burned and broken city. Takeya blames himself for everything that happened to the city. Kagari tells him they need to go somewhere to save the town. On their way, she explains that Takamiya needs to sign a contract with the town to restore witches' magic power. Meanwhile, workshop witches can't use magic and no outside help will arrive in time. To make it worse, Weekend captures a group of witches and straps bombs to them, demanding that they hand over Takamiya in 30 minutes, or she will blast them. Before reaching the contract spot, Takamiya and Kagari have to fight one of the Weekend's underlings Gibraltar. Even though Kagari is unable to use magic, she easily defeats her with her flying kick. Then both of them arrive at the witch's sacred ground to form the contract. While Rhinon and others try to defuse the situation and meet Weekend to negotiate, they request her more time. But Weekend refuses and detonates the bomb, however, at the very last second Takamiya manages to renew the contract with the city's core, allowing Rhinon and others to rescue the hostages and capture Weekend. <laughs> Rhinon and Nastium then lock Weekend inside the magic-proof underground prison. However, Weekend uncovers that she let herself be caught, so she could obliterate the workshop from the inside, which she does with additional secret bombs on her body. <laughs> Takamiya foresees that event and uses his newly acquired powers to revive Rhinon and other injured witches, yet Kagari knocks him out, before the strain of overusing his power kills him. <laughs> Afterward, as Kagari lays Takamiya to rest in what remains of his home, Takamiya views several of Kazane's memories. He sees how Kazane met with his mother when his mother was bullied in her school. He also sees some of Kagari's childhood as well. Mikit shows up, informing that they are in an alternate reality created by the city due to the contract Takamiya just made and takes him down to a shelter where the residents of the city are stuck in form of stars until they can be safely revived. Back into the reality Kagari leaves Takamiya in Atori's care and leaves to fight Weekend alone after borrowing Atori's sword. Upon arriving at the church, Kagari finds Weekend there and attacks Weekend however, in order to completely drain Kagari's magic power Weekend, uses lots of bombs she already planted around the church and fights against Kagari. Meanwhile, in alternate, Mikage reveals that he was the one who erased Takamiya's and Kagari's childhood memories. Suddenly, one of the weekend's underlings attacks Takamiya at the shelter. So Mikage sends Takamiya back to reality while Atori is attending to him. <coughs> Mikage then conveys a message that Weekend intends to obliterate the shelter, except if Takamiya is delivered to her in 30 minutes. Atori and Takamiya rushes to find Kagari. Weekend captures Kagari using giant monster golems, revealing that she planted the bombs in the city months ago as part of her plan. Takamiya races to the scene of a large explosion to find a drain Kagari, and Takamiya provides her some of his power. 
Kagari then uses his power to defeat Weekend and her underling before she can obliterate Shelter. However, Weekend uncovers that she already set off her bomb. Kasumi's bear runs for Tanpopo's help to save Kasumi who is struck under a destroyed building. And as Tanpopo decides to carry Kasumi out from the wreckage, Weekend's bomb wipes out all the residents inside the shelter, including Mikeage. <laughs> Takamiya desperately tries to save them with his power to the point he fell unconscious and meets the White Princess Evermillion. Takamiya made a deal with Evermillion and gains the power to save everyone in exchange for his own life. He uses his power and all the people and buildings in the city are restored as if nothing happened, including Weekend. However, as he tells Kagari about his deal with Evermillion, she chooses to trade her life for Takamiya's without a second to spare. Just then, revived Weekend stab him from the behind. With his remaining strength, he manages to pin her down, but eventually runs out of his energy. Weekend chooses to have Takamiya healed and recognizes her loss, shortly before running into Krenoir. Atori also arrives inside the church, and along with Mikage and Takamiya, they work on a way to bring Ayaka back to life. Mikage tells her to draw a magic circle around Kagari and asks Takamiya to drop his blood on her, and then kisses her. He tries and kisses her on the forehead instead. When it seems that didn't work, Atori forces him to do it again. But miraculously she opened eyes. <laughs> Meanwhile, Kronwar is shown punishing Weekend for using her on her plan. When Kazain shows up, Kazain then demands Kronwar hand Weekend over for questioning. But Kronwar responds that Weekend is her dinner and the two fight each other to settle the previous score. Later, an unconscious Takamiya and Mikage visit Evermillion, as she discusses the renewed contract that Takamiya has formed with her, warning him about the consequences he will have to face in the future. As he awakens, Kagari greets him. In the end, the two then walk to school, and as usual, the KMM gang block their way, even without her magic. Kagari simply grabs Tanpopo and Mei by their faces, and made them submit. I hope you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, comment, share the video and subscribe to the channel.